time. The kid just keeps pushing it. I just wish I could go down there and talk to him before he becomes an asshole, you know? Yeah, I'm sure he'll pick up on it himself eventually. <sighs> Shit. I don't know. Hopefully. I mean, you could always come down as an old nightly apparition. <laughs> I'm trying to help him out, not scare the shit out of him. What? You never seen Scrooge McDuck? Ooh, don't be a prick, Will. Ooh. <sighs> this isn't gonna work today. Why do things not work even after death? Those are the kind of questions I try not to think about. Well, either way, let's get things moving. Y'all did the reading last night? Yep. Yeah. Who do y'all want to start with first? I don't care. Nothing really stuck out to me. Um, I might be overthinking it, but something about Jacob really stuck out for me. Sounds good to me. I don't care. Jacob it is. Ready? Mm -hmm. All right, here is Jacob Rodriguez. So, Rodriguez grew up poor, doing odd jobs here and there to put food on the table for his family. Until high school, where he got a job at a car dealership. Shortly thereafter, he'd become their number one salesman until he got into a dispute with his boss, where he'd leave and he'd start his own dealership. After that, he put out hit pieces against his old boss until eventually they went out of business. But for him, things would start to boom and shortly his family would become reliant solely on him. Over the next six years, he began to dominate the state, doing anything and everything he could to squash the competition. Which means putting hit pieces out against them He'd even charge his own customers exorbitant prices unknowingly and slip things into their contract without their knowledge. Damn, what a scumbag. Yeah, and about halfway through, he dropped his family altogether and opened up a repair shop where if you've got car problems, you only can deal with him. After running out of competition, he sells off his entire business and spends his last years as a philanthropist. So, what do you guys think? Seems pretty clear to me. Yep. What's bothering you? I don't know. It's just our whole job is to debate the gray zone. But this case just seems too simple, you know? What do you mean? Well, we're supposed to compare the good and the bad, right? But does a couple good years make up for a lifetime of being an asshole? No, it doesn't. But I'm just saying, in your whole speech, you only mentioned his family a couple of times when in the reading, it was very clear that his family was a prominent part of his life. For instance, you said earlier that he worked to support his family, but you never mentioned that for almost his whole life, they were completely reliant on him, starting around here. It talks about how not only was he paying for the groceries, but also the rent. Hmm. Okay, well, walk me through it. Because regardless of his family, that doesn't change the outcome of his life. Look, I'm not saying I'm right or wrong. I'm just saying that something doesn't fit right. I'm starting to see what you're saying. Really? Do you? Well, I mean, we're going through this entire thing and not once does it mention or even hint at the fact that he had a friend. Huh? There's no way. Yeah, see for yourself. So that means whatever we're missing must have something to do with his family. It's got to be at least one. Hmm. When is it that he cuts them off? Um, that, hang on, give me a sec, I just saw it. That's on page 46. All right, let's see if anything sticks out. Shit, he's right. Here. While it never outright says why he cut them off, the answer can be inferred. Go to page 38. 
So let's start at high school and make our way here. All right. So in the beginning, Jacob starts off by helping his family out. Then he starts to become more successful and he transitions from helping out to paying all of the bills. After a dispute with his boss, Jacob starts his own company while still paying for everything. All the while, his parents start to work less and less, and he ignores this because family. Eventually, they presumably ask him for more and more as their time frees up. So at what point do you say enough is enough? Okay, well, now we know about his family, but I don't see how that changes anything. He still did what he did. I mean, he is right. I'm sorry, guys, but... No, I'm sorry. I, I just still don't understand how this guy went through his whole life and never made one friend. That just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, he was a busy guy. Maybe he never got the chance. You're right. Huh? It doesn't make sense. Why would someone quit when they got to the top? I'm not following. If you spent your entire life alone doing everything you could to get by and the only people you know, trust, and love are also taking advantage of you, who's to blame when you become the asshole? Yourself. You still chose that path. Did you? Yeah. How long does it take for someone to realize they're doing something wrong if no one ever tells them that it's wrong? What do you mean? Would you blame a dog for biting someone or the owner who raised him? I mean, he wasn't quitting in fear of monopoly. There's a million ways around that. He's quitting because this is the first time he ever realized his mistakes. That's why it took him so long to get into charity. He was attempting to repent. Remember what you were saying earlier about your great-grandchildren? How long and how many mistakes does it take to self-evaluate and learn? Hopefully quickly and not that many. You guys are right. Let's send them up. All in favor? So, who's next? Hang out the stars in Indiana Up in the sky of midnight blue Hang out the stars in Indiana To light my way back home to you Have every robin sing a love song A melody just meant for two for in my heart there'll be a love song, a song I long 